Hi everyone, we start with chapter three, number systems and encoding schemes. Topics covered are decimal, binary, octal, and hexadecimal number systems, most and least significant digit or bit, converting from one number system to the other, binary addition and encoding schemes. So each number system has a base, which is also called a radix. And the uh, decimal number system, which is the most common number system, has base 10. Binary number system has base 2. Octal number system has base 8. And the hexadecimal number system has base 16. We start with the binary number system, which consists of bits. And each bit has value either 0 or 1. The advantages of the binary system is that it's useful in computer programming languages and it's used in digital encoding as it uh, produces less computational errors. However, the numbers in binary are really large, so it's very difficult to read and write for humans. That is the disadvantage. The octal number system consists of digits from zero to seven and uh, any other number will be written as a combination of numbers between 0 and 7. The octal uh, number system is used as a shorthand for representing file permissions on Unix systems, and it's also used for representation of UTF-8 uh, numbers, which we'll see later in the chapter. It uses less digits than decimal and hexadecimal number system, so it's got fewer computations, hence less computational errors. The disadvantage is that uh, the computer systems don't understand octal number system directly, so we need to convert to binary. The hexadecimal number system consists of digits from 0 to 15. 0 to 9 are represented by the normal decimal numbers, However, 10 to 15 are represented using the capital alphabets A to F. The advantage of the hexadecimal system is that it's used in computer programming and microprocessors. It's used to represent computer memory addresses, and it's used to describe colors with more than 16 million possible colors. It uses less memory to store more numbers. The disadvantage is it's not easy to read for people, and it's difficult to perform multiplication and division. The prefixes used are 0B or uh, 0 capital B for binary numbers, 0O for octal numbers, 0X for hexadecimal numbers. The most significant bit is, or the digit, uh, the most significant digit is the one which is on the leftmost side of any number. It has the maximum numerical value. In case of binary, this could only be the digit one. In case of octal, it can be a digit from one to seven. In hexadecimal, it can be a number from one to uh, 15. And in decimal, it can be between one and nine. Now, the most significant bit is the leftmost one. The least significant one bit or digit is the one on the rightmost side, which has the least numerical value. In binary, this can be one or zero. And uh, if the binary number ends with one, that means it's an odd binary number. And if it ends with zero, it means it's, a even, it's an even binary number. We start with converting a decimal number to binary. We divide the number by two, write the quotient below and the remainder on the side. The first remainder, which is either a zero or a one in any case, is the least significant digit or bit. Uh, as we go on dividing, we keep getting a, a quotient till we reach one. The last remainder that is one is going to be our most significant digit. So let us look at an example where we have a a decimal number 210 and we divide it to get the binary version. So every time we divide we write the remainder on the side till we end with one and that becomes our most significant digit. So we start by looking from the lower part say one one zero one zero zero one zero. 
Now to check whether we've got the correct binary number, we will now convert it back to its decimal form by multiplying it to powers of 2. And we start with the least significant bit, which we multiply by 2 raised to power 0. And as we move towards the most significant bit, we keep increasing the power of 2. So here we get a product which is 128 for the most significant bit, 64 for the next, 0 for the next bit, 16, 0, 0, 2, and 0, which we now add to get the decimal result. And the result ends up as 210, which is the number we started off with. So this is how we convert from binary back to decimal system. We look at how to convert a decimal number to its octal version. We start by dividing the decimal number by 8 and write the quotient below. The remainder is going to be on the side. The first remainder is going to be our least significant digit. And it can be only zero, to anything from zero to seven. We keep dividing these till we reach the last remainder, which is going to be our most significant bit. We look at it as an example. The decimal that we are taking is 1013, and we divide it by eight, and we get our um, most significant digit is one. So we start looking from there, one, seven, six, and five are the remainders. So that is our octal digit. If we want to check, we can convert it back to its decimal version using the uh, multiplying it by eight. And we start from the least significant digit, five, multiplied by eight raised to power zero, six is multiplied by eight raised to power one, and so on and we get all these products and then we add them to get our original decimal number 1030. We look at how to convert a decimal number to hexadecimal. We start by dividing the number by 16. We get the quotient below, the remainder on the side. The remainder can be anything from 0 to 15 and the first remainder is the least significant digit as always. We keep dividing till we reach the last remainder, which becomes our most significant digit. We look at an example here. We have 22,079 as our decimal number, which we convert into its um, hexadecimal version by dividing with 16 and each time we write the remainder on the side the first remainder is 15 the second is 3 the third is 6 and the last remainder is 5 which is our most significant digit so we say 5 6 3 and instead of 15 we we'll write f here because as i told you the hexadecimal system uses alphabets instead of these numbers so to convert it back into decimal for checking, we can multiply the least significant digit by 16 raised to power 0, and then by 16 raised to power 1, 16 raised to power 2, and 16 raised to power 3. We get the following products. We add these and we get our original decimal number. To convert any binary number to octal, we need to take the binary number apart into groups of three. So each group will have three bits. In case the, bit, the group does not have three bits, we will add zero to the most significant bit. So here we have um, one zero one one one, which we divide into two groups of one 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 and one zero to which we've added another zero. We then convert it into its decimal version. And here we get the answer 27, which is the octal value of the binary 10111. So it's pretty simple and straightforward. We take the number apart into groups of three, and each time we convert it into its decimal form. If we have to convert the octal into binary, we just take each digit convert it into its binary form. So here we have five, 
uh, we have four and we have two. So we converted them and we get one zero for two, we get one zero zero for four and one zero one for five. We put these all together to get the answer, which is one zero one zero zero one zero one. That's the answer of this octal to binary conversion. If we need to convert a binary into hexadecimal, that's also pretty straightforward. We uh, take it apart into bits of uh, groups of four bits each. And if there is something which does not have uh, enough bits, we will keep adding zeros to its most, uh, at its most significant place, that is on the leftmost side, and then convert it to its decimal version. So here we have uh, the number 1010111, which we converted into hexadecimal by taking it apart into groups of four and then converting it into its decimal form. So 57 is the hexadecimal version of the binary 1010111. To convert hexadecimal to binary, we take the hexadecimal number apart and each digit is converted to its binary version. So if the number is four, it's made, uh, its binary version is 100. We add another zero to it on the most significant bit. 5 is 101, we add another 0 to its most significant bit. 2 is 10, we add two zeros to its most significant bit. F is 15, so 1111, and E is 1110. We will put all these bits together and that makes our binary number. Now we come to binary addition. We know that binary a uh, number system has only two digits, zeros and ones. So the, there are some simple rules for binary addition. That is two zeros will always end up as zero, zero and one will always end up as one. One and one will end up as one zero and one, 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 that is three times one will end up as one, one. So whenever we've got to add, we just need to follow the rules that we follow in decimal addition. That is, add the number. If there is something to carry over, we will carry it over. So here we have the uh, two uh, numbers, binary numbers, and we adding them bit by bit. So the first one says zero and one, so we take that. The second number is one and one, we take zero and carry over one. The carried over number is a little colored, so you can see it. Now we get another one and one, which is again zero, and we carry over one because, as I told you, two in binary is one and zero. So we keep doing that exactly the way we do in decimal systems and follow the rules that we've just mentioned before. We come to standard character codes. Now, any kind of text in, on the computer or even on the web is composed of characters which can be alphabets, numbers, special characters. So there's a coded character set, which is basically a unique number assigned to each character. And this is mapped to bytes for manipulation in the computer. Now, we start with the ASCII character encoding, which is basically American Standard Code for Information Interchange, which was developed by the American National Standards Institute or ANSI. And it has been for many, many years till 2007, one of the most used uh, character codes with these as their codes. Uh, so the Capital A had code 65 in decimal. Obviously, they had their codes in hexadecimal and binary as well. Each alphabet has a unique code. Similarly, each special character has a code. In 2007, the Unicode Consortium provided a large single character set that aimed at including all characters reading uh, for all languages all around the world, even ancient scripts. Now, this was important because all websites around the world can now translate into their local language and it has made the web more inclusive in a sense. Now, the UTF, which stands for Unicode Transformation, 
it basically defines an algorithm to map every Unicode code point to a unique byte sequence. So this is the one that converts it into its binary form. So there are three um, main UTF coding systems. There's UTF-8, UTF-16, and UTF-32. Now the difference between these is how many bits it requires to represent a character in the memory. For example, the UTF-8 takes eight bits, UTF-16 takes 16 bits, and UTF-32 takes 32 bits. Uh, why do we need those many bits? Well, one byte is required for the first 128 characters, same as the ASCII. Two bytes are required for, uh, you know, Greek, Armenian, Hebrew, Arabic, Syrian, even West African language alphabets. Three bytes are needed for characters in the rest of those, you know, languages like uh, Chinese, Japanese, Korean. Four bytes are needed with characters for, you know, historic scripts, mathematical symbols, or emojis. The Indian script code for information interchange, the ISKI, is also another coding scheme, which is uh, writing systems of, basically it represents various writing systems of India. And the supported scripts are uh, Assamese, Bengali, Devanagari, Gujarati, Gurmukhi, Kannar, um, Uriya, Tamil, and Telugu. It's an 8-bit encoding, and uh, here is how it looks. So that brings us to the end of this chapter. I hope you've understood, and I hope you will continue watching. Uh, I will see you soon. Bye-bye.